Apologies for the technical difficulties. We're as frustrated as you are, but we're happy to have you back along with us courtside inside the gym at Lemonster High School. Todd Robbins alongside Kate Robbins for Ravelry Family Media tonight. About halfway through this first quarter, Lemonster and Gardner here at the gym at Lemonster High School. Blue Devils a 3-0 record. Gardner a record of 0-3 coming into the night. First four minutes gone by. Lemonster with a 10-5 lead. Plus five here through the first four minutes. Wildcats opened with a flurry, a three-point basket to open the basketball game. Controlled the ball substantially through the first couple of minutes, but weren't able to capitalize on it. And then Lemonster, slow and steady, has found their way back into this basketball game. Right off the shoot as we welcome you back on the air, Kevin Viola with the lay-in. And meanwhile, Gardner head coach Pete Kamash says 12-5, that's enough of a run. He'll take a timeout and have a conversation with his squad over on the bench, which gives us an opportunity to say hello to you courtside as well here inside the gym at Lemonster High School. It's as if, Kate, they knew we needed a minute uh, to, uh, to say hello here inside the, uh, the gym at Lemonster High School. We appreciate everyone's patience. Through the technical difficulties, we also welcome our viewers joining us via delay at Lemonster TV. Apologize for your delay in the play-by-play -play call as well, but we're happy to have you now along with us here courtside uh, as we have reestablished our connection with our friends at Facebook Live. Kate, an interesting battle here, 3-0 Lemonster through the first two weeks. Meanwhile, 0-3 Gardner. Coach Gamash had said to me earlier in the week, he knows his team was capable of more in that battle on Monday night. They were very closely matched. There were points where Gardner had a chance to close what ended up ultimately being a 10-point deficit and maybe push Lemonster back on the heels. Starting with that three-point basket certainly made a difference off the top, but unfortunately, they find themselves now in a 12-5 hole halfway through this first quarter. I think one of the most interesting points that you made right up off the top is this situation with the home and home. The fact that a coaching staff can see something on Monday and have a few days to be able to put in place a remedy for exactly what they saw. They don't have to worry about any other opponents for the week. And so you can put in a, an adjustment um, we always talk about mid-game adjustments so frequently, but you can put in an adjustment as a coaching staff and then you can kind of see it come to fruition throughout the rest of the week. Obviously, because there are so few games, it, it's a situation where, you know, things can kind of get out of control pretty quickly. But like we said, that home and home situation certainly does make things a, a lot easier on a coaching staff in that respect. Indeed it does. Brian well. Perez picks up his second team, second for the Blue Devils, and for the Wildcats, Mena has two, team has two as well. Put back good there for Brian Richards, seeing some of his first action of the night. And so Donna with control for Lemonster, moving from left to right, cuts to the foul line, pops a mid-range, can't get it to go, and the rebound down in the hands of the Wildcats. This is Cologne. As we pass under the three-minute mark, Lemonster holding that steady five-point lead, and into the cut come the Wildcats. A three-point basket there for Ryan Gray, and all of a sudden, Lemonster's, what had been a pretty steady five-point lead, is cut to just two. Blue Devils with a little struggle on the offensive end. This is Halstead for Perez, then back to Dada straight away. Now into the corner, it's Perez. The baseline drive, switches to the right hand. Nice job going left-handed down the baseline, crossed over to the right and laid it off the window and good. 14-10, Lemonster, 2.15 left here in quarter one. One of the things that these Wildcats are doing because Lemonster right now already has two threes from the, uh, from the exterior perimeter there. One of the things that you're seeing is that on that defense, they really are trying to, trying to push. So Lemonster is gonna have to get into the paint if they're gonna wanna make anything happen. Scoop shot won't go there for Viola. Then there's a foul on the post shot action. And they're gonna bill it against Lemonster. Isaac Tyson gets charged for that one. That'll be his first team third for the Blue Devils. And seeing some of his first action of the night, it's Chase Hawes for the Blue Devils. Had a great night, first broadcast. We saw them last week in a game against Narragansett. He's had a little bit of a struggle since. That can happen to a young player, getting some of his first substantial varsity action. 
I assume, Kate, it has nothing to do with the fact that we mispronounced his name the entirety of that first broadcast. Probably not. <laughs> but we've been corrected, so that's a good thing. We thank the uh, community members for helping us out with that. We want to get it right. Absolutely. We do everything we possibly can. And I mean, Kate, the story is fantastic. Oh, it is. Are you going to tell it? Uh, we will, uh, at our next juncture of the action, we'll, uh, we'll get that in. Here's a lay-in good for Paul Victor. Uh, is the story of how we got the name and the, our ability here on this broadcast to bring the community together, so to speak, amazing. Dada drops to Viola. Inside out, it will work its way to Moisin. And then a foul away from the ball. Looked like they pointed out Feliciano. 125 to play here in quarter one. 14 12 Lemonsters lead. Fouls at three apiece. Gardner open with the basketball. There have been no held ball since. Arrow favors the Blue Devils. Turnovers have not become a problem quite yet. So that's good for both squads. You like to see that get cleaned up around midseason. Viola drops on the roll from Moisin. And Moisin from the right elbow with the smooth drop. Right now, scoring contributions from five different Blue Devils so far here in the early going. Hard charge up floor, Feliciano queued up Gray, and Gray too strong from the left corner as we wind under the first minute, or the last minute here, of quarter number one. Here's Moisin off the front rim. Players spin down to the floor on the rebounding action. I think Gray caught either a fingertip or an elbow. And he's going to get some medical attention over on the far side there. He does pick up his first foul, though, on that previous action. It's going to be team fourth. It's going to be his first. But we are going to... Uh, yeah, the assistant coaching staff and the trainer on site was able to jump on top of him. And Ugh. yeah, they're going to have to uh, clean things up. It, it, it looks like it, it's a, much like a boxing injury. It's in the area just above the left eye socket. There's a lot of blood. Um, and much like any other facial injury that will tend to, uh, to bleed significantly, they were able to get him off on the floor. He's getting the medical attention he needs. He'll be perfectly fine. He's going to have a great story to go with it uh, and, a, and a heck of a shiner, but they're going to take a second to, uh, to clean things up out here well, that's, on the floor. And you mentioned that's one of the things about any type of facial injury. Um, sadly, my, I have, I have a, a story. I was a swimmer in high school, and when I was a sophomore, I was in the middle of a practice, and we were doing a relay, and a swimmer dove into the water and punched me directly into the face Ouch. and I was wearing um, goggles that didn't have any padding on them and so it sliced open my face and it just bled profusely it wasn't anything you know crazy or tragic but that area of the body does tend to bleed quite a bit so it looks a lot more significant than it likely is but um, everybody doing a really nice job being very attentive over there the training staff doing a really nice job um, athletic director David Palazzi from Lemister is taking care of the remnants. The communicable disease, communicable disease rule clean is in up, effect. Yes, absolutely. So we're just going to have a, a little bit of a spell here. But like you said, he looks completely fine. It's not in his eye. You Correct. can tell it's above it. Um, so they'll get him cleaned up and uh, see how he does. Like you said, a, a scary, if not nerve-wracking situation. I know, of course, his parents very likely joining us on the, uh, on the broadcast this evening. Uh, and from what we can tell from our location here across the floor, we can He'll report okay. out that he's going to be okay. Yeah, both eyes are functioning. We'll keep you appraised as the ball is put back into play. And it's Haas for Viola cutting down the left side of the lane. He'll lay it in and good. And Lemonster increases their lead in the final 40 seconds of the first quarter to 18-12. That was a long five. Yeah, full court pressure. And they were able to find their way in. It's Feliciano, under 30 seconds here in quarter one, and a moving screen called, an offensive foul, and the ball will go back to Lemonster. 26 and 8 tenths seconds left here in quarter one, 18-12 Lemonster's lead. Found my newest favorite official. Nice, crisp, large call there. No hesitation. I do got, appreciate I've a, got a, new favorite. A, a big charge call when you get yeah, one. We know that I have favorites in football. <laughs> so now I found a favorite in basketball. It took a while, but I found one. Dada for Halstead. Final 15 seconds of the first quarter. Shot clock off. Lemister can hold for the last shot. Viola, token drive. Back for Halstead. 
Now for Moisen. Moisen a little underhand scoop. Viola guns baseline in a triple team Haas. Swatted away and driven to the floor. He landed hard on his tail as Sam Mena got all ball and the body momentum just sent Haas to the floor. He didn't have his legs underneath him on his way down. And that's the way the first quarter of action will end. Through one quarter, which has been choppy to say the least, Lemonster on top of Gardner by an 18-12 mark. So many ways to play in this one. Of course, you're watching live broadcast here, facebook.com slash media rivalry for your live coverage of Lemonster High School basketball. And then, of course, game available on demand, slightly modified this evening, and we appreciate your patience. On YouTube, you can search Rivalry Family Media on YouTube. You can like, follow, and subscribe today. Updates to the schedule and reports from around the region as well. Available on Twitter, at Media Rivalry for that social media information. <laughs> Gonna get a closer look here over on the bench area. And you can see uh, the, uh, the eye area swelled up there pretty quick, Kate. Uh, but does look like good news to report, as we, uh, we said earlier, does appear to be okay over on the other uh, sideline there. As you said, he'll have a story. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Lemonster will start with the basketball to begin quarter number two. They'll continue going left to right. Wearing the home white tops, white bottoms, trimmed in royal blue, royal blue across the shoulders, and the royal blue numerals front and back. Blue Devils, parallel and square around the numbers on the front of the jersey. Moisen with the jumper, missed everything, Dada the rebound, but committed the foul on the rebounding action, and you could see Moisen frustrated with himself. Dada picks up his first, it's gonna be team fourth for the Blue Devils. And Feliciano will bring the ball up floor with Perry. Float in the post, Nico Delicchiai back with the Blue Devils after missing the first game of the season we had here on RFM. He works the transition with Dada to perfection, the drop off, the kiss off glass, and Lemonster's lead is up eight through seven and a half left here in the second quarter. And Dada and is up to seven points on the night so far. Sorry, Kate, an unforced error as that one gets sent across the baseline out of bounds. Seventh turnover for Gardner thus far. Donna sporting the red and white shoes down there. I'll never get used to a Blue Devil athlete wearing red anything. So <laughs> I, I know there's a number of alumni and current uh, players that, that are with me, that are oh with boy. me on the, on the fields. I like the off colors. Like there's some great off colors out there. There's an electric blue over on the Gardner side. We've got a, a lime green there, called Key Lime Pie out there. Uh, but the red on the blue and white, mm, mm, mm. there's a red on, on black and orange as well for Gardner. But Mm. Red on Lemonster, gonna struggle with that one. Viola with the three, he hits. Viola's up to seven on the night as well. Now for the record, sharp kicks. Make no mistake about it, they're nice looking shoes. They're just red. I like the periwinkle purple we've got sported out there the as we see uh, Aceus purple. seeing his first action tonight. Yes, I have, uh, uh, Cs's, uh shoes have been, uh, been something I, I've actually eyed. Uh-oh. We've. Got a visitor. Will miss his first. 6.50 to play here in the second quarter. Confirmation from the athletic director that the injury that Gray sustained is above the eye. Good. Um, just above and he will be okay, just in case anybody is uh, at home watching. We do appreciate it. I mean, that's the, the very different, we usually are able to talk about it off the start of the broadcast. The abrupt start tonight, of course, made it a little more difficult to, uh, to acknowledge, of course, those of you joining us from home, as Zacias sets up a three and hits, and Lemster's lead now 26 to 12. And I know how difficult it is for parents not to be here to begin with, and then when you see potentially your student athlete go out of this game, 
uh, in a tough situation. And of course, we're able to only offer so much as Perez makes the pick, lay-in and good. Perez now up to seven points as well. We could certainly appreciate how difficult that might be. Three-point opportunity there won't go for Brian Richard. But we'll do our level best as the dutiful reporters that we are keep you up to date on any situations that are there. And uh, we appreciate Lemister Athletic Director Dave Palazzi able to come over and share that information with us. There's a spin move for Asias. Sets up Dada for a three. No roll on that one. And it came off hard on the rim. And the rebound comes down in the hands of Collins. And then a foul on the rebounding action will be charged against Lemonster. Foul starting to pile up on both sides yeah. of the ball. 12 combined to this point. That one is going to be against Delikei. It's going to be his first. It's going to be team six. Yeah, so 12 total between the two schools. 5.45 to play here in the second quarter. Lemonster's lead 28-12. I thought, Kate, we were going to get a live update on a pronunciation. That was what oh. I was really expecting from Lovinster AD. Dave Palazzi. skip pass goes into the corner. Feliciano got that one from Mena. And then back and forth, they play catch. Feliciano tried the entry pass and not able to successfully get it in the interior. Whistles kill the play, and the inbound will now come out. Remember... COVID modified basketball rules here in 2021. All offensive end inbounds will come from foul line extended, even if the play would traditionally call for an inbound at the baseline. Five to shoot on the possession. Victor swings for Cologne. Needs some help. And they lost track of time on that one. 5.15 to play in the second quarter, and the ball back to Lemonster on the seemingly unforced error as the Wildcats just couldn't get anything going on the possession. Lemons are doing a little bit more communicating than we've heard. Indeed. Directing traffic is Perez. Asias finds Delekiai for the turnaround in the lane that won't go. Perez drops it off for Delekiai and Lemister maintains possession. Jumper for Viola and he hits. For three. He's got 10 now, double digits. He's hit two threes back to back. Ball poked loose. They throw it out in front of Viola. That's how you pay off a steal. Viola with the steal to start the possession. Didn't catch who got the follow up possession, but Viola does a nice job. Makes the tip, gets the leak out down floor, gets the payoff on the other end, lays it in and good with the points. Steal plus points on that possession for Viola. And a timeout taken on the court, taken by the Wildcats, 4.37 to play here in the second quarter, and a 33-12 Lemonster lead. For those people watching on the stream, we once again have a link that has been posted that is not an actual link in the comments. So if you see a link posted in the comments that is not from us, please do not click it. Fascinating. Yeah, advertising you're getting too popular. Advertising a game against Quabbin that, uh, that we are clearly not doing as well. If it's not one thing, it's another here courtside from the gym at Lemonster High School tonight. But it's great to have you along with us. So, Kate, we started off, we kind of teased at it, and now we've kind of uh, matriculated yes, away from it. But it. we've got to talk about this Chase Hawes situation. Yep. Uh, so we, I, I get an email after the uh, the game last week. It was forwarded along as from, from AD Palazzi. It does happen from time <laughs> to time. You never know what the contents of that email yeah. may in include and so it turns out uh you know as the i'm reading through the mad at you this no not at all no no complaints <laughs> from the officials uh or anything like that uh so i i start reading the, the body of the email and the uh, the body of the email basically sets it up this way it, uh, you know coach palazzi says hey check below for a pronunciation so i i scroll down a little bit farther and so i start to read this email and from uh you know a, a concerned grandmother concerned uh who is trying to relay the situation uh you know with the proper pronunciation she explains in the email that and this is my favorite part she was one of athletic director dave palazzi's elementary school teachers and she like a perfect elementary school teacher, the ones I remember, <laughs> set up that pronunciation perfectly. I love it. Spelled, of course, H-A-U-S-E, which I pronounced as house last week, not as in the one you live in, but house like, you know, you might pronounce a last name. And she does a great job of saying it's house, but not house. It's haws, rhymes, rhymes with, with pause. pause. I was like, perfect. Nice I can work with that. Nice by Viola. Viola comes up short on the lay-in. 
So nonetheless, you know, we, the good news is, is that uh, after a visit, quick visit to the principal's office, yep. athletic director Dave Palazzi has been allowed to return to the uh, action. Uh, he is uh, now out of timeout, dating back to, I don't know when he was in elementary school. Uh, I don't want to put a date on him. Well, you know um, that he was the quarterback for Lemonster High School at the 100th game. 100th so game, 1983. 1983. Yep, that's correct. So, he, uh, assumedly, he was not a senior then, I don't believe. <laughs> no, he was not. He was so a junior. So, let's call him a junior. So, then you subtract that from your five years old in the first grade. So, 17 minus 5. So, 12 years prior, he had... So... 1970. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> mm-hmm. Sure he's but thrilled. we uh, we do appreciate uh, the uh, the email anytime. Uh, you know we uh, we love the communication whether you relay it through the athletic office or, or through us directly. Ravelryfamilymedia at gmail.com uh, for the direct or of course you can always uh, send us a direct message via Twitter at Media Ravelry uh, or right here on Facebook. We take live corrections. We've had times before where folks yep. just drop a pronunciation correction in the comments. I'll take it personally here. Like Kate said uh, moments ago, our end goal is to get it right. Uh, and that is what we are aiming for here and having the opportunity to uh, to feature uh, this coverage for the community, both here in Lemonster and across the North Central Mass and Central Mass region broadly. I've been very fortunate here in our three years at Ravelry Family Media and with our partners at WPKZ, Lemonster TV, and the Associated to get a chance to cover a number of games all across the other uh, region as well. Delikiai with the strong take lay-in is good 37 14 Lemonster on top 310 to play here in the second quarter this game will wrap up Gardner week for the Blue Devils and on to next week as we look ahead schedule wise it is rivalry anything back inside the gym at Lemonster High School. Of course, in winter season one, Fitchburg and Lemon, excuse me, fall season one, Lemonster and Fitchburg got put in separate pods. And so Todd you had, was I was heartbroken. You had no Fitchburg, Lemonster, anything uh, for that, that first uh, chunk of this COVID modified season of sports. But the, uh, the good news out there is, wow. here in fall number, excuse me, in winter number one, the teams back together. And away we go, Fitchburg Lemonster Week next week here with basketball. Gardner right now having a little bit of difficulty on the offensive end. Lemonster playing stifling defense right now. Gardner's working hard to figure it out. Uh, Lemonster's doing a good job keeping them off balance as well, Kate. Uh, they're, they're going between the two, three man's uh, principled zone that you would see from like a Syracuse University to straight man off of made baskets uh, and Look you can that. see it's caused wow. Gardner to be rather off balance but Richard rises up above the rim nice job with the hesitation and then able to lay it in 220 to play here in the second quarter Asias with the drive throws on the brakes and skidded the pivot foot called for the walk and the walk will go back with the basketball to the Wildcats Wrapping up that thought on Fitchburg Lemonster Week next week, Monday the 25th. It's Fitchburg Lemonster Girls 6 p.m. tip here on Rivalry Family Media and the Associated. And then on Thursday, the 28th, Fitchburg Lemonster Boys here at the gym at Lemonster High School. We'll have the coverage for you on that one as well. And with that turnover, that's the 11th turnover for Gardner here in the first half thus far. That's the stat right now to me that's jumping off the stat sheet. Lemonster has had a pretty clean four turnover first half, whereas Gardner up to 10. And the lay-in is good there. Asias and Perez work together to convert those points. Perez up to nine points for the Blue Devils. Gray returns to the basketball game, launches up his first three-pointer just wide of the mark, and then in transition back down floor. Lemister draws the foul. Two shots coming up here for Viola going to the line. Samantha Richards says, come on, Gardner, root on your team. Whichever way you may prefer here and your associations with either the blue and white or orange and black here on this one. Lemister and Gardner boys here on Ravelry Family Media. We do appreciate the contribution joining us as well. And again, the, uh, the reminder Kate put out there for, for those of you that are just joining us, that link that has been posted inside, uh, we will get taken care of at halftime. It's been posted in the comments area. Uh, that is nefarious. We will get that taken down 
at halftime. 137 to play until that halftime or end of quarter number two, depending on how you look at it, and a 41-16 score. Both teams in the bonus rest of the way. Fouls at seven aside. That pass a little long of its intended mark. Out of bounds and the ball back to Lemonster. And that's one of the things that I've noticed as well. We, we've talked quite a bit about the about the chemistry on the floor and knowing where your teammates are. Gardner has been struggling a little bit on the offensive end with their passing. There's been a, quite a few errant passes, strong passes, but errant passes that have gone out of bounds, which have caused some of their 12 turnovers. So again, that's the stat right now that's jumping off the page at me. The 12 turnovers for Gardner and the four turnovers for Lemonster. Everything else fairly even, of course, um, other than the score at the moment. Fouls are fairly even. Both teams are in the bonus at this point in time. Foul shooting um, is fairly even as well. So the big stat is the turnover stat. And even rebounds. Rebounds are, are fairly, fairly even as well as Tyson misses his first. Set up on this one on a missed shot from Dada, but sometimes things do work out as Tyson came down, went right back up with it and drew the foul. 1-0 for 2 at the line, though, so Lemonster goes scoreless on the possession. Minute 10 to play here in the second quarter. This is Cologne, the long distance 2, and he hits. The Wildcats can shoot their way back into this basketball game. They are more than capable. As we go under the final minute here of the second quarter, Viola will miss the shot, and then the loose ball will spin its way to Tyson, who sets up an opportunity for a three that is delivered on by Terrence McCormick. Final 45 seconds of the second quarter. Cologne. The crossover got stuck giving up the dribble in the midst of a triple team. There's the pick, and then the down floor outlet Dada for Perez. He got bumped, but he walked with it first. Substitutions will check here as they'll make some adjustments. Coach Gamash does a little offense for defense shuffle. Wants to put an extra shooter out on the floor. Two second differential shot clock to game clock, so the shot clock's still on here. Gray was caught in a double team in that left corner. Tried to pass his way out of it. It got tipped up floor. It's McCormick. Finds Viola. No luck on the touch. Rebound ripped down there for Collins. Up floor he goes. Puts it in the hands of Perry. And then Perry, too long of his intended errant, target, Marlin. The errant pass once again. But Todd, you just mentioned the name Gray. Um, he is back in the game for Gardner. His eye is clearly well enough. And that last second shot thrown up wide of said mark. And that is the way the second quarter will come to an end. Through two quarters here at the gym at Lemonster High School for the Blue Devils. It's a commanding 44 to 18 lead through the first two quarters here inside the gym at Lemonster High School. We'll step aside for a moment, get some things cleared up on our end, and we'll be back with you. Third quarter action in just a moment. This is RFM.
Back inside the gym at Lemonster High School, Todd Robbins alongside Kate Robbins for Rivalry Family Media tonight. And great to have you along with us. Teams will change ends to start the third quarter of action. And right off the start, Dada comes flying down the right wing through the paint, draws contact, count the basket, great finish at the rim. And he'll go to the line for a three-point play opportunity. Kate, Dada's two points aside, plus the foul shot coming up here. What stood off your chart through the first two quarters of action? Right now, Lemonster getting scoring contributions from quite a few different players. Viola with a team high, 16 points in the first half of play for Lemonster. Perez with nine. Dada up through the first half with nine points as well. On Gardner's side of the ball, right now Cologne has a team high six points. He was four of four from the charity stripe as well. So Gardner doing a lot of things very well, but definitely struggling with turnovers um, and particularly their passing, a lot of errant passing tonight thus far. And it's the little things. Once those things start to happen, it's quicksand. One thing, then another. A not so sure pass as they try to look the Blue Devil defense off. Perez missed the initial, but Dada rises up. Catch and shoot. And Lemonster's lead is now plus 30. 48-18, 7-10 to play here in the third. Right back down floor though, the response comes from Sam Mena who gets an open look and buries a three. And if you're Gardner, that's what you want. You want that quick strike, get some points. If you've got a look, take it. Um, well, as cliche as it may be, Kate, there's no 27 point basket. Certainly. So you've got to build it one shot at a time. Terrence McCormick with the baseline drive and the lay in good. Lemonster crosses the 50 mark, 640 to play here in the third. And I think that's an important point that you've, you've got to kind of play into this. You've got to build it one basket at a time on the offensive end and one turnover at a time on the defensive end. You basically need a two for one the rest of the way. Oh, if he had finished on that. Players Victor get right tied there up. had a beautiful look. Gardner doing a much better job passing and working in transition to get back on the offensive end. And on that one, Victor had a beautiful look but wasn't able to finish with the layup. It was Viola and Victor that got tied up on the held ball. The alternate possession favored Lemonster, and then they find Perez, and Perez kind of all by himself. Takes a walk. Takes a walk with it, my goodness. 6.22 to play here in the third. The whistles have been prevalent. Again, here's Gray back in the game after the uh, eye injury, left eye just above it. He's doing well, both eyes open. He looks lucid, it looks clear. He's good to go. Absolutely. And he wants the ball. He does. He wants an opportunity to get back on the score sheet. Glasses, oh, off the head of Victor. Landed on him the rebound. Lemonster in transition. Perez oh. will lay it in and good. That was the, the visceral reaction as somebody who has worn glasses even when they played basketball back in the day. Uh, I, I felt that one. Uh, I, I really did. I felt that one for Victor. I, I feel terrible uh, for him. That's, that's no good. Ouch. Under six minutes we go here in the third. 52-21, Lemonster on top. Do we know who got that last bucket for Lemonster? I don't, I had seen the glasses come flying off and I kind of locked in on that. <laughs> uh, as, as, like I said, it, somebody, I've worn them since the third grade. I, I just know, I just know how frustrating that can be. 5.49 to play here in the third. Lemonster with the basketball and back down floor from right to left. Viola, the drive into a double team. Kicks Perez in the corner. Hits a three. 55-21. Perez now with 11 points for the Blue Devils. And Lemonster K doing what they need to do. They're building the skill opportunity here. They have still got a majority, very young team. And so these opportunities to build chemistry, to continue to improve, to continue to work the ball, that's why at this point in the third quarter, you can't take your foot off the gas in the lane, the nice step around for Tyson, but couldn't finish at the rim. Feliciano for Cologne. Cologne with the deep three, doesn't go. Viola got the long rebound, and now takes it down floor and lays it in and good. 
with a sweet touch at the rim for Viola. Viola now up to 18 points for the Blue Devils. And one of the things that we're seeing from Gardner here, they're really trying to press. They're trying to press hard. They see the score differential. They're working hard. Some of the passing isn't working. And so you can see them really trying to press hard in the offensive zone, but more errant passes. And then they're only getting one shot opportunities. They're not getting the offensive boards that they need to be effective. It's one shot and then right back to Lemonster and Lemonster continuously hitting. Back every to back time. possessions for assists for Dada. First one he found on the inside, it was Tyson and then followed up for Viola. Great court vision for Justin Dada, the sophomore. And it's kind of remarkable considering how few games there are. Lemonster doing a nice job here. They look like they're in mid-season form, even though we're only in week two, but it's week two of only five. Correct. And so as sad as it sounds, You're this heading is mid-season. Yeah, we're in mid-season. And so it's nice to see Lemonster firing on all cylinders. Gardner, again, they are giving it. They're all out there. They are, you can see the amount of effort, the amount of push that they're giving, especially on the offensive end. And right now, like you said, it's the little things not necessarily clicking. But again, this is only the fourth game of the season. So this is the type of thing that you might expect to see in game four of the season. Swing in the corner, it's Gray. He's wanted to get back on the score sheet and he buries a three there. Call him fully Joy out there on the floor. Here's Perez, slams on the brakes. Back top of the key, Dada into a double team. Swings around, through McCormick to Perez. Short the shot, battle for the rebound. Tipped and rolling back down floor and that was deflected into the backcourt. So Lemonster could go back, pick it up, bring it back up floor and continue their possession. This is Perez, tried to set up a jumper looking for the inside there. I think it was Nevard on the it inside was. that they were looking for and weren't able to find him. Lemonster though with the pick back down floor. Dada taking on three Wildcats, draws the foul, and finishes at the rim. 63-24 with a flourish. Dada now up to 15 points on the score sheet. And this is the kind of contribution Coach Kevin Grudgefield was expecting from Dada this year and mm -hmm. frankly had to have from him mm -hmm. in order to get this team clicking on all cylinders in a much younger lineup this year. Again, remember Lemonster with just the two seniors, Tyson and Perez, everybody else is an underclassman. And in that starting lineup, Lemonster started more than a handful uh, of underclassmen, freshmen and sophomores, uh, including Dada, McCormick, and Delikiai tonight as well. Richard picks up a quick second foul and it's gonna be team third for the Wildcats in the second half, sending Dada to the line, and he hits. He does indeed. Lemister pushes their lead to 41. 2.50 to play here in the third quarter. He has 17 points, does Dada. And you mentioned that again, Todd, and, it, and you, can't, you can't say it enough. When you graduate senior-laden leadership and you're asking a student athlete to, to pick up the slack the very next year, as a coach, you know, you know that you have a good player. You know you have a competent player. Now it's about what type of leadership skill they're going to be able to bring, and is that balance still going to be there? Is, is, it, is it going to be too much pressure for a young student athlete? And in this case, this is like you said, this is what Coach was hoping to see out of Dada this year. And it's a step in a positive direction, right? In Certainly. the maturation process of a player, you're at sophomore year. Sophomore year is going to be weird no matter what. There's some growth you need to expect, and then you hope things settle to a more normal rhythm for junior and senior year, and hopefully there's a whole team that can grow with you. Well, and as a sophomore to be asked to be put into a leadership role, it is a little bit uncomfortable, having gone through a little bit of it um, myself, not at in a, uh, a premier sport like this, but being a, a leader, this is, this would be like, this would. Uh, well, don't cut softball down. No, no, no not softball, okay. volleyball. I was the sophomore captain on the varsity team. And it's, it's, an, it's an odd position to be asked to take because, you know, most of the time as a sophomore, you're really just starting to get into your own. And in this case, you're, you're asking that student athlete to take on quite a significant position of leadership. And so it's been nice to see um, 
coach probably being able to take a, a little bit of a sigh of relief saying, okay, it's not too much pressure to put on a sophomore to ask him to step up because of the amount of co uh, contribution that he had as a freshman, the amount of minutes that he had. He's doing a great job. Got some great folks checking in with us out there on Facebook tonight. Deborah Dada out there sends uh, some positivity, both, uh, you know, for uh, Justin, as well as for Perez, uh, and I also see T-Mac getting some positive love as well uh, out there uh, as well. And as we take a look over there on the Wildcat bench, we have an update, uh, or I should say a, a well wish or a message from Emily Malcolmson says, come on number 12 uh, out there uh, as well. So there you, uh, there you have it. Uh, messages of, of well wishing in all directions. And uh, we certainly do appreciate it here. Uh, at the gym at Lemonster High School, and we're glad we're able to pass some of that love along from those that are at home and can't be here inside the gym because of the COVID modifications. Uh, but we're glad to be kind of the intermediary, if you will, the vessel through which you get to participate uh, in this basketball season here at the gym at Lemonster High School. Perez at the line had a good, strong take Got himself a foul, and he will hit the first. And, of course, this odd season for the senior Perez and Isaac Tyson, who are just excited to have seasons uh, to be able to play. But you could see Perez, that strong take to the basket, able to, uh, to lay it in. Perez shorts that one, so one of two on the trip. Haas the rebound. He'll set up Halstead. Inside Dada, that one won't go. And the rebound is pulled down. Final two minutes here of the third quarter. Here's Dada, the drive, kick back, Haas. And there's a little forearm shiver there. Defender was not defending with the feet, defending with the forearm, so they will blow the play dead. That's gonna be Lemoyne's first. It's gonna be team fifth for the Wildcats in the second half. Hawes for Perez. And now back to Hawes. Halstead finds Perez. Top of the key. Swing for Dada. Dada breaks down. Drive the lane. Draws the foul on the inside. This one will go against Lemoyne. And Dada's got two shots coming from the line. Lemoyne's going to pick up his quick second. It'll be team six for Gardner. And that's going to send Dada back to the line. I'm 17 points so far for Dada, make it 18 points now. Kate mentioned, of course, we're at the kind of de facto, if you will, halfway point of this season. We'll hit it we officially <laughs> some, sometime next week. Uh, but she it's Fitchburg Lemonster Week, and next week, then it's Oakmont Lemonster Week in the first week of February. Second week of February, this modified regular season comes to an end with Quabbin Lemonster Week. Looking forward to all of that upcoming action. Bounce in the paint there for Paul Victor. Glasses taped back up and back in the basketball game. Clear vision, able to lay it in and good. Final 90 seconds of the third. And Haas comes back down floor and bombs away with a three. His first points of the game. 71-26, Lemonster's lead. A minute 15 left here in the third. And a whistle away from the play. Kate, I'm warming up to some sneakers out there. You know me. Always looking to add to the collection. I like the electric blue that Marlin is sporting out there. There's another set out there. I'm trying to find them. I'm so happy. I know. I know. I know you're just because enthused. Because what you need is you, more sneakers. You, you, can, you can just hear the delivery truck arriving at the house already. He has more shoes than I do, everybody. <laughs> by a lot. It's not, even, it's not even by a little. It's by a lot. Feliciano for Marlin. And stutters those electric blue high tops. And the ball will go back to the Blue Devils. 57 and 9 tenths left here in the third. 71-26, Lemonster's lead. I think... I'm going to have to exercise my veto power <laughs> and say, maybe you have a birthday coming up, so maybe later. Maybe later. Maybe later. Spin through the lane. Nice move. Yeah, Halstead will drop it for Haas and slow things down. Gardner's defense, though, I tell you, they have been working so hard out there. Forcing Lemonster to work. Haas drops it off for Nevard. Swings his way back to the top of the key. Perez. Swarming. Tried to do too much with that one, but we'll pick it right back. Make up for the giveaway. 
Make the steal, found Dada, and Dada couldn't finish at the rim. Everything's not always going to come up roses, and so a little adversity is a good thing as well. Perez tried to jump the lane on Marlin. Marlin keeps possession into the corner, drops it off for Martins. Swing around. This is Feliciano. Feliciano tried the drive in kick and was just off the mark, aiming for Gray, set up in the left corner. And with every single turnover that Gardner has had, especially in the second half, the 11 turnovers that they've had, Lemitzer has scored on every single turnover, it seems like, that Gardner's had. Perez takes the contested three, got bumped, skidded into the Lemonster bench. It was off the mark and three quarters down here at the gym at Lemonster High School. 71-26, Blue Devils on top, Wildcats through three quarters. The all-important fourth and final quarter coming up here inside Viola is the gym at Lemonster High School. Go ahead, Kate. 20 points. Viola is up to 20 points. Perez has 12 points for the Blue Devils. I'm just tabulating and talking as I go. <laughs> 19 points so far for Dada. He had 10 points in the third quarter alone. Scoring contributions thus far for the Blue Devils from eight different people. That is absolutely out of control. For the Wildcats, Cologne right now with the team high six points, as is Gray. But we know Gray spent the vast majority of the second quarter having to get looked at by the team trainer. He wasn't even in the room. He was out in the hallway having to uh, having to get bandaged up. But he has come back with a vengeance. His defense has been stellar. And he is on the board for the Wildcats with a tied team high six points for Gray. Again, Lemister's turnovers have been probably the highlight of, of my stat sheet on this end. Only two turnovers that I've been able to uh, to tabulate here in the second half, and I have them for only four turnovers in the first half. So turnovers, in my estimation, have been a, a, a gleaming, shining beacon for the Blue Devils thus far in this one. And they have certainly generated their fair share of them, to say the least, uh, as they have worked their way through. And it's it's been about, you know, playing defense with your feet, cutting off the passing lanes, getting the hands into those passing lanes, uh, and making things more difficult for the Wildcats. And the timing has been just right to get those hands in the right place at the right time. Whistle the ball put back in play, and we start the fourth and final quarter here inside the gym at Lemonster High School. And you can hear the communication out on the floor. A lot of chatter out there. Asias. Inside that pass got tipped. Sam Mena, that one was too close and too hot coming into his location. Turnover number 12 for the Wildcats in the second half. And again, Lemonster doing a really nice job scoring on almost every single one of those turnovers that Gardner has had. It's not exactly a freebie, but it might as well be. Indeed. Here's Halstead. Nice defense. Tried to cut down nice the lane, yeah, nice and job. it clean from behind. It was Victor and working with Mena. Yeah. They were able to get a hand across and not make contact with the body. Up the floor, yes, indeed. The conversion, Halstead for Haas. Haas with five points now. Oh, we got a, a shoe issue. Don't pass it to the guy that needs to tie his shoe. Indeed. They try to push it back out. In this case, it was Martins. Another steal for Lemonster. Indeed, and that's a Cias with the lay-in good, 75-26. 6.40 to play here in the four. Cologne tries to put it over to Mena, and Mena lost the handle on it and into the bench. And Coach Pete Gamash, in this case, Coaching right now for the future, trying to get opportunities, combinations worked out, trying to get players to gain more experience out there on the floor. And I mean, starting four seniors and a junior with a bench of seniors and juniors certainly is a great opportunity for this Wildcat team. And maybe just having a bit of a tough night tonight, they certainly will, uh, will have an opportunity. And I've taken a look at their JV roster as well, and they have a substantial JV roster, not something uh, that every team has available to them out there right now. So they'll get younger uh, and get opportunities to grow and develop starting next year as well as Halstead finishes at the rim. Cologne 
Tried to push it inside, looking for Victor. Got tied up with Nevard. Alternate possession, Lemonster basketball. And I think their JV team did very well in the game beforehand. I, I was putting equipment together, so I only glanced very quickly. But I think they did very well in the game earlier this evening. But I could be completely wrong. So no, not never, at all. Never trust my <laughs> what I say. Asias for Haas. Haas into the trees. There were four black jerseys there. Indeed there was. Kicked back out though for Halstead. Drew all the attention and got Halstead open for a wide open three. 80 to 26. Lemonster on top. Cologne comes back down floor. Trying to move quickly. Fires and misses a three. And in transition, this is Asias for Haas. Now back to Asias from the tight right corner. Wow. Got it up on the rim. A little kiss of the glass and down it goes. 5.15 left here in the fourth and an 83-26 Lemonster lead. And I know there are folks out there that are joining us maybe perhaps for the first time tonight and you're wondering to yourself, given of course the score and what you're seeing here, you know how, how can these two teams be equatable? Remember that in this 2021 season, the primary goal for all of Midwatch, regardless of where you were, was to be able to safely have competitions. That has been the mission of athletic directors, principals, and athletic leaders all across the state here in 2021. So competitive balance was not one of the factors that was really considered in putting together these pods. Pods were put together geographically to create the safest travel in best possible travel situations and of course to keep the smallest bubbles you possibly can, if you will, of schools working together mm -hmm. in order to keep one another safe. So this pod six, full of a lot of great teams with some great rivalry history out there as you take a look. Fitchburg, Gardner, Lemonster, Narragansett, Oakmont, and Quabbin. Uh, and you can certainly see the way things have gone thus far. Uh, you know, in this one, you know, maybe not a perfect year, but these two schools routinely played each other in fantastic battles in years gone by. This just may not have been the perfect year for the two of them to match up. Well, in the previous game that they played earlier in the week, incredibly close matchup. And so this is one of those situations where, you know, you're taking a look to see what types of adjustments are the coaching staffs making? And so when you get a second bite at that apple right off the bat, it becomes uh, kind of interesting to see those in those in week, not necessarily in game, but in week adjustments that are able to be made. Gray, Gray picks up his third. It's going to be team eighth. Lemonster remains in the bonus. Halstead picks up his first there. Yep, he does hit the first. And like you said, the the true victory is being out on the court every at all, single night. Period. At all. And Safely. Both, and all of the teams know that. Four and a half to play here in the fourth. That's why when you're taking a look at Gardner, there's nobody hanging their head. Nope. There's nobody giving up. There's every bit of effort that you expect from a from a three-point game that you're seeing out here. And that's what you like to see because everybody involved understands the true victory is being out on the court. Because if they had taken, if you talked to the seniors um, in baseball, softball, or lacrosse, what they wouldn't give just to be able to have a truncated season Absolutely. last spring, that becomes something that, uh, that the student athletes know they're taking advantage of having the opportunity and that's really what what they're asking for. They want to be able to play. And although these players may not have been uh, seniors at the time, some of them may have experienced the loss of a season last year. So they know what's at stake. They know what the opportunity is and they're all out there. And I will say this is something unique to Central Mass and I have a view of Eastern Mass as well. Um, here in Central Mass, knock on plastic because it's the plastic city uh you know the the one thing i i can say is that the players are making the right choices they're making the right choices to take care of one another take care of themselves nice be able to stay healthy uh and uh, and stay out and stay away ward off an international pandemic to be able to stay out on the floor and that's a great credit to student athletes from the ages of 14 to 18 to be able to make the right decisions when you know what it's not the easy thing to do making the right decision every day 
to be selfless because you want to be able to contest your sport is not easy by any stretch of the imagination, uh, especially going on now, uh, you know, with this international pandemic. Turn the corner yesterday was, of course, the finding of the uh, one year mark of the finding of the first case here in the United States. And you're just a little less than two months away now as Haas hits the three from one year since the shutdown began. Uh, and that's the longest where year we are. Of our lives. Absolutely, for everybody, yeah. it has been the longest year. You can only imagine how difficult it is to be a teenager who has a lot of things on their mind and an international pandemic is the last well, that's of the things they we, want to pay attention to. that's why we to. feel so acutely for the parents because they are seeing, they, they understand what their experiences were like as a teenager and understanding exactly what has been taken from their, you know, from their children, from, from the people that, you know, they are closest to and just how significant that is. And so when you hear parents out there advocating on behalf of their student athletes, everybody understands. When you hear parents advocating on behalf of their children, everybody understands because they know so acutely yes. exactly what it is that's being taken away. And, and, and not because of anything other than uh, a, a pandemic that has raged out of control for almost a year. 2.58 to play here in the fourth. 89-26, Lemonster's lead. And Kate, you referred to those spring athletes. And of course, some of the reporting we saw out of MIAA land yesterday uh, that was telling is that one of the, the motions that was made yesterday, of course, the MIAA has not sanctioned playoffs to this point. They have no intention, and they took a vote to this effect yesterday of sanctioning playoffs in fall two. But there was a motion on the table that when we arrive at the spring season in May and June, there has been a request that the MIAA look into hosting some kind of a postseason tournament as a, if you will, a makeup to those spring athletes that weren't able to compete for a state championship in 2020. Now, when everyone sits down with the lawyers and the liability and everything else gets sorted out, will that be able to happen? Call me skeptical at this point in time, but I know everybody's doing the best they possibly can to even have the discussion about whether that's something that can be on the table for spring athletes. We'll see what comes out of it. Swing into the corner. This is Collins. Missed the shot. Tip of the rebound. Kept alive there by Richard. Scramble. Merlin recovers. The reverse lay-in is good. Plus a foul. Coach Gamash makes a couple of puzzle piece adjustments before Marlin has the opportunity at the line to complete a three-point play. Front rim, no. Moisten the rebound. 2-10 to play here in the fourth. 89-28, Lemonster on top. Coming up post-game here on Rivalry Family Media, we'll be joined courtside by Lemonster High School head coach Kevin Grudgefield. Looking forward to talking to him, discussing the development of things through two weeks with three to go here in this modified winter season. Cologne got an open look, missed it to the right in the rebound for Hawes. Collins came down gingerly and is trying to scramble back into the play. Might have gotten stepped on either in the rebounding action or landed on a foot and rolled. He's back, though, back in the paint. Yeah, he scrambled back in. He's not giving up. But you can see he's playing on, at best, a foot. CS with the drive called for what looked like, well, the signal appeared to be a double dribble, but they waved off the basket is what they did. And so it will be a foul. No, they are saying it was an inadvertent whistle. So Lemonster will continue with six on the shot clock. No foul was reported out, so an inadvertent finger whistle. That can happen. Literally a little quick on the trigger. Three to shoot. Haas will throw one up. He got rim. Battle for the rebound. Whistle. And the foul on the rebounding action build to Gardner. Double bonus up here for the Blue Devils, and that will send Nevard to the line. Gray is going to pick up his fourth. It's going to be team limit. Compliments out there from Amy Lynn for Mike Halstead. And a let's go Lemonster from Roseanne Santos. 
Thank you so much for checking in with us here on Ravelry Family Media. Great to be hosting you along with everybody else, part of our winter family here on Ravelry Family Media. That one won't go. The tip and the rebound pulled down from Weissen. 110 to play here in the fourth. Hawes with control. And now for Halstead. We'll see if Coach Grutchfield's bunch works the ball here. It's certainly going to use every second they can on the clock as they wind under a minute here in the fourth quarter. Eight to shoot. Moisen, cross court, skip Hawes. Then Halstead. Five to shoot, and Halstead hits the three. Wow. It's fun to watch, but it's NBA 2K now as we go under 30 seconds here in the fourth. 92-28. Lemonster's lead. Swing. Shot is wide of the mark for Marlin. Kept alive, there. indeed. Lay-in opportunity for Perry, not able to go. Haas runs out the rebound. Final 13 seconds here of the fourth. Lemonster can dribble this one out. Haas will hang on to it. Final five ticks to come off the board here. And Lemonster will pick up their fourth victory of the season by a 92-28 mark over the Wildcats of Gardner tonight. Wildcats came out swinging, had great control in the opening minutes of this game. Some of them, of course, we were unable to bring you here on Rivalry Family Media. Uh, but uh, without that, uh, with that piece aside, what I can tell you, Gardner came out strong. They controlled the early minutes of the game, opened with a three, added two more points, got to five, and then Lemonster went on a run, got themselves a, on a 12-5 run, and then never really looked back from there. And that was the compounding complication for the Wildcats tonight, and Lovenster just slowly, steadily, and successively added point after point after point out there, turning turnovers into points, doing exactly what you would want out there uh, if you are Coach Kevin Grudgefield, and we'll have an opportunity to speak to him courtside coming up in a matter of moments. 92-28, Lovenster a winner over Gardner tonight. We'll step aside. Coming up. Lemister head coach Kevin Grutchfield joins us socially distanced in courtside here on RFM. This is Ravelry Family Media.
back inside the gym at Lemonster High School here on Ravelry Family Media. Lemonster 92-28, Victor over Gardner tonight. Todd Robbins, Kate Robbins, and joined courtside by Lemonster head coach Kevin Grudgefield. Coach, another great win tonight. You push your record to 4-0 through the first two weeks. Amazingly, we're discussing the halfway point of this uh, modified basketball season. But what I said to you before we, we came on was, you know, if, if I had said to you, weeks ago, uh, probably during that dark period at some point when you couldn't actually meet as a team. Coach, in your first two weeks, you're going to have two games where you're going to score in excess of 90 points. I said to you, would you take it? Uh, I wouldn't doubt you would, but would you have ever seen it coming? I think that's the great question. I definitely um, did not see it coming in practice, but I, I love that the majority of these points are coming off our defense. We're, we're getting a ton of deflections. Um, we're, we're starting to really attack the basket better. Um, we're shooting the ball. We, we, we put up a ton of shots in practice yesterday. So um, very pleased with the effort tonight. You've already taken the words out of my mouth. The amount of points scored off of turnovers and steals, just how stifling your defense was and how much that translated into points tonight. Absolutely remarkable. So as you said, although it looks like an explosion of offense, it really is a true testament to the, to, the, to the key defense that you had tonight. And um, like you said, talking about them moving around as well as they did on defense and that then translating on the other side. Also, turnovers much improved tonight as well from last week. Absolutely. We, you know, we really struggled Monday night against them up there. We, we turned the ball over a lot. We missed a ton of layups. Um, we, we didn't have a, a sense of urgency at all. Tonight, it was a different story. Mm -hmm. We started off sluggish first couple of minutes. We played around with the lineups a little bit. We started to get some deflections and we got some, some quick hoops and we hit some open shots. And you know that's what our system is, is built around. We wanna score our points from our defense. And when, when we're doing that, it really doesn't matter who we're playing because we can be successful as long as we play hard aggressive defense and tonight we mixed up zone and man-to-man -man and, and we had great results with our with our zone and the defense was poetic coach mm -hmm. a lot of it played with your feet you weren't having to bang around on the inside other than you know crashing the boards but you were playing out beyond you're keeping them off balance going between a straight up man to man and in what I call the, the Syracuse University 2 3 zone there you go. Uh, with the uh, with the man to man principles, right? Yep. I mean, the, the ability for your players to move, adjust, trap, get their hands in passing lanes uh, was stifling for Gardner's defense tonight. Yeah, and, tonight. and you, you know the Jim Beheim <laughs> zone defense yep. well. Um, we haven't done it a ton in practice, so I was a little bit worried tonight. But um, and, and our hands aren't up as much as they should be. But, you know, baby steps. We're, we're, we're getting there. Um, this was a this was a good confidence builder tonight. And then, you know, the iron of the schedule starts next week. We, we got Fitchburg twice and then Oakmont it was who's got the best team in the league. They're coming in. So um, it's good, good, good evening to 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 uh, get our confidence. You know, one of the things we talked about during the broadcast is, of course, something you had said to us, you know, a, a matter of last week, and, and that was that the broadcast in and of itself shows the importance of this game. The fact that when you look at it on video, you wouldn't have known it was a 92-28 game. There was at no point where either team was thinking, uh, this would be a good time to say, a year ago, people might say, okay, this game is over. You just don't see that. You haven't seen that in any sport because people are just so pleased with the, the fact that there are sports to be played right. and there's improvement to be made even in a 92-28 game. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I can't even express to you guys how excited our, our kids are getting in the gym every day. They're so happy to, to be squeezing the season in, mm -hmm. um, and we don't we don't take anything for granted. It's literally one day at a time, and we got to be super careful. But um, it's 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 great for them. It's great for our freshmen and our JV programs as well that we're we're, we're having this season. One of the other things I wanted to ask you about, you talked about moving the puzzle pieces around early in the game, and I just did some quick tabulations. 51 of your 92 points coming off the bench tonight. Oh, wow. Just speak about, uh, not necessarily to the depth of your, of your lineup, but the ability to make those in-game adjustments so that the people coming off the bench tonight contributing 51 of your 92 points. Yeah, we, we have um, such quickness and all these kids are unselfish and they just want to contribute. So it, it really allows me 
um, the freedom of if somebody's struggling or somebody's not bringing the, the, their effort, you know, they know there's two guys behind them that can come in and do the job. And um, I'm, I'm confident and comfortable with all 11 of my guys. Just go out there and, and we can compete and play hard. And that's what we did tonight. You know, talk about a, a performance, of course, and, and Kate will run down the, the stats when we wrap up talking to you. But I think the, the piece to me that impressed me the most, maybe the, the flurry of action that stands out in my mind was back-to-back -back possessions where Justin Dada created for his teammates. Right. Uh, and that is such an important aspect that people undervalue. You know, you talk about if you're an offensive player, you're a scorer, and you're going to go run up the total. But to be able to create for your teammates, to draw coverage, and then drop the ball off to somebody. Uh, there was a, a, an opportunity on the first possession for a two-point jumper from the foul line. He decides to abort that because he sees a wide-open player for a lay-in at the baseline drops it off to them, and then came right back down the floor, drew the defense, and kicked, setting up a three-point basket. So, I mean, back-to-back -back plays uh, where you can see, I think, just a microcosm of that overall philosophy you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Justin, I get mad at him sometimes for being too unselfish. I, I want him to be, to be more selfish, and, you know, he's one of the better players around. He's only a sophomore. We forget that. You know, my, my expectations of, on him are high. Um, I want him to, to, to reach his potential. And, you know, he's, he really is such a hardworking, polite, honest kid. He, he's, he's a great role model for these kids, but he's only a sophomore, you know. And Brian Perez is another kid who, you know, he, he may have been a little bit selfish when he was younger. Now he's a senior, now he's a leader. He loves to make that extra pass. He loves the assist more than the shot, you know. So you can see the culture sort of kind of starting to build. You can see the, the, these older kids um, showing the younger kids the way to do it. And it's great. I mean, the, the, the depth and the leadership has it w it's been fantastic. You alluded to it a few moments ago. The rivalry returns next week. It's going to be the first rivalry game contested since last basketball season. Right. Uh, so Fitchburg and Lemister certainly dying to play something against one another. Uh, and here comes that opportunity next week. I know you haven't had a chance. You'll have a practice coming up tomorrow to get ready for Monday's game. A little bit first thought, first reaction, what you know about the Fitchburg Red Raiders coming in here next week? Uh, be, right before I, I, I answer that question, yes. I, I got to tell you guys, um, your biggest fans, uh -oh. all three of you, are, are my, my two kids, <gasps> Jack, Jack and Kate, oh, good and my wife Katie. They, they watch. They're so excited when you guys are. <laughs> the other night they said, w w are the, the announcers going to be there? And I said, Aww. no, they're, they're only going to do the home game. So. Um, that's Shout out nice. to them because they're watching right now. Well, we and, appreciate it. And they want me to thank you guys for oh, doing such a fantastic nice. job. Oh, that's you, fantastic. Coach. Thank you um, so much. So to answer your question, <laughs> Fitchburg is scrappy, and it's a, it's a situation that they, it worries the heck out of me. Certainly. Because yeah. they're going to play the best game of the year. They're going to be fired up. They're going to play good defense. They can shoot. You know, They don't have a ton of size. Um, and you guys know better than anybody when it's Fitchburg limits or it's going to be a bloodbath. So uh -huh. um, we're going to have we're going to have some good practices. We're going to get our, our our defense better, and we're going to be ready. And so off to the Doug Grudge Field Fieldhouse you go next week yes, on Monday after one practice on a Friday. Good luck, Coach. And then we'll see you <laughs> next Thursday at the end of that. I don't know how you guys are doing it, but keep up the great work. Uh, Thank you very much. Thanks so much, I Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Uh, Thanks, Coach. Right. Lemus Red Coach Kevin Grudgefield joining us here courtside. And Kate, an opportunity uh, to uh, to hear you know some some great thoughts about the development and what's going on over there. You know, and as far as the pieces coming together, fitting together the way that you would want over time. But again, it's it's still early. It's four games in two weeks. I, I mean, it's it's you know it's, being four and zero. Oh, you want to you want to put a big Big smile on your face but it's it's hard to do that in a 10 game season when you're just about halfway through and and it's such it's such a difficult situation to to have the emotional aspect of, of being 4-0 understanding that you're only four games in and coach has talked about it the amount of growth that his players have been experiencing even in this truncated season is is very it's significant you can you can literally see game to game where you see them once a week and from last week, it's astronomical, the difference. And um, so seeing that court awareness, seeing that chemistry really developing, you can see on the coaching staff, they just want more of it. They want more and more, but they're already looking down the barrel at there's only three three weeks left. There's yep. only six games left after the, a, after tonight. And so it's kind of it's this bittersweetness. You can see how ecstatic the coaching staffs are. They can see, you can see it even in a, in a losing effort on Gardner's end. They're not hanging their heads 
the fact that, I mean, you have no more motivation than being in a situation where, hey, guys, we've got a five-week-long season, so it's 10 games regular season, maybe a pod playoff at the end. We can only practice the, the, the other three days, but we get to be together, we get to be in the building, and you have a situation where you actually get human interaction that's not on a screen. So just they're, they're just absolutely ecstatic. You can see that it's, it's bittersweet. They love being out here. They love seeing the improvement, but they can already see the, the, the end of the tunnel and, and they want to keep playing, but they don't want it to end. And it's, so it's, it's, it's bittersweet. And you can see it, that heart and the, and the head kind of in, 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 at odds with one another. No one, uh, no question about that indeed. And so we, uh, we continue with this uh, season. Kate's gonna have a, a final wrap up uh, of the stats tonight in this 92-28 Lemonster victory here as Kate so aptly put it in an explosion of defense yeah. that translated to a whole heck of a lot of offense. And that's the big takeaway and I know Coach mentioned it um, and, and really did bring that into fruition. The defense that we saw in this game was the hallmark. The 92 points aside, yes. But the fact that 51 points came off the bench, the fact that almost every single time there was a turnover, Lemonster was able to score in transition. The f amount of turnovers that Lemonster have, they end the night with just 11 turnovers for the whole game. Okay, that is a significant improvement. They're cleaning things up on, on their offensive end. They are taking advantage of every opportunity on the defensive end, and that's what's translating into the explosion of points. It's not as if you know, they're being messy on the defensive end and they're just going down in transition and they're scoring. It's, it's an enti it was a beautifully poetic game on the defensive end that translated into a masterful offensive explosion of points. Indeed it did. Before I let Kate make the final rundown on stats, uh, the best reporter that Rivalry Family Media has available, our, our, our one available reporter has checked in tonight from Gardner. That's Lemonster oh. High School principal, Dr. Steve <laughs> Dubzinski, checking in and we can confirm that both Blue Devil basketball teams have improved to 4-0 tonight. Lemonster with a victory in the girls' side of things out in Gardner I was like, tonight. We have a reporter on staff? We, we, have, an, we have an intrepid we reporter, Dr. Intrepid Steve Dubzinski, reporter. now the Sal Palantonio of this <laughs> broadcast uh, as he is out in Gardner, out and traveling. Crowd control. Crowd control, doing a lot. We do appreciate the check-ins. It's yeah. great to be able to relay that information on the broadcast, obviously. And of course, is he with, it, with deep ties to, to Gardner. Gardner. Yes, area. indeed. An yes, opportunity to, to check back in there as well. Sure so Mom, Lemonster Mom here in, in this one, on the boys' side, a 92-28 victory, and Kate's got your final stats. All right, let's take a look at team totals first. First for the Wildcats of Gardner. They lose by 64 points. They've got 20 rebounds. They had one steal, 30 turnovers. Um, they had, were four of nine from the charity stripe. That's 44%. Notable individual statistics for the Wildcats. Cologne ends the night tied with a team high six. He ties with Gray, six points apiece. Richard ends the night with four. Victor ends the night with four as well. Now for the Lemonster Blue Devils side of the ball. Team totals first. 32 rebounds, 10 steals, only 11 turnovers. They shot 10 of 23 from the line. That's 44%. They're victorious with a with the uh, margin of 64 points. They have scoring contributions from 10 separate players, 51 of their 92 points coming off the bench tonight. Let's run down their end of... Sorry, Kate, that's a great stat, hey, by thanks. the way, uh, of Boop. 51 out of the 92 points coming off the bench. Uh, for just for boom shakalaka, just for good, <laughs> good, good <laughs> for old time's sake there. Bam. All right, so Viola ends his night with a team high 20 points. All of those points scored in the first three quarters. I'm not sure that we even saw him out there in the fourth quarter. Moisten ends the night with two. Hawes ends the night with eight. Halstead ends the night with 10. All 10 of his points coming in the fourth quarter. Perez ends his night with 12. All of those coming in the first three quarters. McCormick ends the night with five points. Asias ends his night with nine points. Tyson with two. Dada ends his night with 19 points. All of them coming in the first three quarters as well. And Delikiai ends his night with five points as well. So a total team effort. We talked about the poetic defense. 92 points. On offense, a beautifully, masterfully done job by the coaching staff and by the player, uh, the student athletes. And before I let you wrap things up, now I have to say hi to the to the Gretschfield clan, our fans. Now we have to we have to say hi to them if they're watching. 
Absolutely, you you stole my thunder. I, yeah. I had it I had it all queued up, but no, we uh, we do appreciate that. Such a such a fantastic opportunity to have uh, everyone that is a part of, of our broadcast family to be able to uh, to join us. But uh, it is always great when you hear some direct interaction. So we uh, we do certainly thank Coach Garchfield's on the way home. Uh, yes, he is. We let, uh, we, we let him go. So he is on the he is on the way home. He will uh, he will be there shortly as well. And we look forward to being with this group again next week, next Thursday. Todd, so uh, Todd always makes sure that. We we're the last ones to leave. Yeah, well, we do our we do our level best to bring you the uh, the complete coverage uh, from coin toss of basketball to final stats. It's I have I, we have one other check in. We have a check in about whether or not the schools are going to have football. We can report the MIAA did start talking about football, um, which would be coming up in the spring two season, which would start its fall two. Oh, I've been sorry. tripping over all the seasons fall all night long. Fall two season, yes. which would start uh, uh, in and around March. We do know that the fall two season will not have that MIAA sanctioned playoff. Right. We haven't seen schedules coming out, but um, with regard to volleyball, because girls volleyball yes. did not participate in fall one and football in this area as well, seemingly things are continuing to move in the right direction. So likely going to be a truncated schedule. We know that there are not going to be any MIAA playoffs for fall two. That would be for either volleyball or football or for whatever sport teams didn't play in fall Correct. one, which I can't imagine that there are many because they wouldn't really have anybody to play. Um, but girls volleyball and football likely starting up in March. Keep uh, keep your eyes peeled and everything posted for that. Yeah, tryouts are slated uh, if things move forward in the direction that they are scheduled to. Tryouts are slated for around the February vacation time period. It's about that third week in February. Uh, and then I think the date's around the 20th, 21st, 22nd, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, and then uh, shortly thereafter, uh, once they get ramped up, games would start sometime in March. And I believe the discussion when last I knew in the middle watch uh, was to go with similar six team pods now they may be a different combination of six teams but similar six team pods certainly expect Lemonster and Fitchburg to be in the same pod together I would I would we're expect. still we're still hoping for the Battle of the Bunny we're that's hoping right. for Easter Sunday that's it my hope Easter <laughs> Sunday Lemonster Fitchburg rivalry game because we do know the Catholic Church does allow for games on days of celebration, as Easter would be. Yes. Not on Good Friday, because that is a, uh, a day of mourning. We know that because of your work with the NCAA. Certainly. So, we, hopefully, Battle of the Bunny. That's what I'm fear fear the fear the bunny. That's what I'm hoping. Um, I'm hoping for a Lemonster Fitchburg rivalry game for football on Easter Sunday. Get the ham ready. If the College of the Holy Cross <laughs> can play baseball and softball on Easter Sunday, I see no reason why Lemonster and Fitchburg could not That's right. uh, play oh, let's wrap this in, up. in the battle of the ham, if you will, yes. uh, for Get that one. Ham. So that is potentially coming up as well. But yes, thank you, Kevin Arnold, for checking in with that question. It is uh, certainly everyone's hope that there will be a football and girls volleyball season coming up as part of fall two. And then the spring on the other side of that, baseball, softball, lacrosse, boys and girls uh, as well as boys volleyball should all be on the docket and wrestling I believe has been relocated into that spring with a modified outdoor effect I mean we're talking like throwback to the Olympics so with which wrestling Greco-Roman wrestling was an original Olympic sport potentially competing outdoors could be a fascinating possibility as well lots of things to come uh, and many moving pieces between here and there but yes uh, football so far is still on schedule. No schedules available yet, but if it's 16 pods, you're talking about five games uh, of football. Uh, you, you won't be able to play more than that unless you play teams twice mm. with a 16 pod. So that is what is potentially on the docket coming up uh, in, a, in the next handful of months. But lots of sports between here and there, uh, and we're looking forward to it. And, of course, here at Ravelry Family Media, we're looking forward to all those that, uh, that we outlined in some components there. Of course, once we get to that spring and there's seven or eight sports happening, we're going to have to pick and choose a little bit. I know our friends in the la lacrosse world are excited to have the, uh, the coverage available as well, so certainly uh, we'll be uh, looking forward to that. It's going to be and a busy spring for you. Yeah, right? a lot of bat ball sports as well, hopefully. So lots to come. Stay with us. We'll be out there with you uh, as well as our, our partners hopefully at the K-Zone will be back joining us as well on the radio side uh, and as well with Lemonster TV. So so many things uh, to, uh, to look forward to in the weeks and months ahead.
That's going to bring it to a wrap, Kate, with only the opportunity to remind folks that, again, as we said, thus tonight concludes Gardner Week here in basketball, and Rivalry Week begins coming up on Monday. Monday, January the 25th, right here at the gym at Lemonster High School. It's Fitchburg and Lemonster on the girls' side, 6 p.m. the tip-off. Broadcast will be fired up much earlier uh, on that night, uh, hopefully somewhere around 5.45. We'll be on the air with you coming up on Monday for Lemonster and Fitchburg girls. And then on Thursday night, the 28th, it's Fitchburg and Lemonster boys right here at the gym at Lemonster High School. A 6 o'clock tip-off will be on the air at 545 for that one. So that is Fitchburg Lemonster week in winter hoops coming up and again like we said first time these two schools will have matched up since last basketball season in any sport that's going to be exciting and we're looking forward to being the conduit through which you can be a part of that one and as we say there are so many ways to participate in these broadcasts live premieres right here facebook.com slash media rivalry and then the games available same day on demand on YouTube, youtube.com, search Rivalry Family Media. Like, follow, subscribe out there today or that tiny URL, tinyurl.com slash media rivalry will take you directly to Rivalry Family Media's YouTube page. And then for schedule updates and other scores and reports from around the region, try to bring it your one-stop shop. You can follow at media rivalry or twitter.com slash media rivalry. For those of you doing it the old-fashioned way out there in the Twitterverse, for that one as well. 92-28, once again, Lemonster tops Gardner here from the gym at Lemonster High School. Blue Devils improved to 4-0 and on the boys' side, and we know for a fact they are 4-0 and on the girls' side, thanks to some fantastic reporting back to us here on the broadcast as well tonight. Meanwhile, the Wildcats fall to 0-4 in the first two weeks of this modified 2021 season. For Kate Robbins and the rest of the Ravelry Family Media family, we say thank you so very much for being a part of our family over the last couple of hours and for sticking with us through those early technical difficulties. We certainly do appreciate your patience as we got our act together here courtside tonight. Until next time, for Kate Robbins, I am Todd Robbins saying thank you so very much for joining us. And until next week, Monday night, Fitchburg and Lemonster here on RFM. So long, everybody.